I was looking at the free section of my favorite website and I saw an ad for a free trimmer. The strange thing was where they said it was located at. They apparently live very close to a Staples office supply store and that's where they said it was at. After driving 20 minutes to Midtown, I drove behind the building to find this trimmer sitting in the shade of a tree. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Weed Eater brand trimmer and the problem is I don't know if it works. Now the ad didn't mention what kind of condition it was in but I hate to tell you I'd rather not know anything about it because I find it more exciting when I figure out what the problem is. Now I'm going to try and repair this trimmer however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information about these other options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. The first thing I'd like to do is look over the machine and see what kind of condition it's in. I'm glad to report this thing is in really good shape, and what I'm talking about is there's not a lot of cosmetic damage to it, so it doesn't appear to have been abused at all. The next thing I want to do is see if it will start and run if I put some fuel into the carb's throat. After removing the air filter cover, we can see that the air filter has definitely seen better days. It's beginning to break down. If we did start it, it would have gone inside the engine, so we'll just get rid of it for right now. If we do get this engine working, I'll order a new filter, hopefully before the next mowing season. Luckily, it started and ran for a few seconds, which is great news. Now, if yours does not start, I would use a spark checker to see if you have spark from the ignition system. Also, if you're curious to know whether your trimmer head is supposed to spin during the test run, just spin the head by hand, and if it won't easily spin to make a full turn in either direction, then it means you do not have a clutch, and it will spin during the test run. Now this one is tough to spin and that means it does not have a clutch under this part of the plastic cover and that's why the trimmer head was spinning during the test run. I also noticed that one of the strings is longer than the other so I'm just going to cut it to be the same size as the other one. That may be a bit OCD of me but I've learned to live with it. So there is some fuel in the tank but I'm going to pour it out and get rid of it because I don't know how old it is or what kind of condition it's in. I also noticed that there's a few loose things inside the fuel tank so we're going to get them out and see what they are. So it looks like the fuel line for the filter has broken off in the tank along with the plastic splice for the return line. That means we'll need to replace the lines, but it looks like we'll be able to reuse the filter and the splice. Now there's still one good fuel line going to the tank, but it's the return line. Just as a test, I'm going to make the return line the fuel filter line because I want to see if we need to inspect the carb. If this works and the engine runs, this quick modification will save a lot of time. I'll just cut off the end of the line, then I'll install the filter to it, move it back inside the tank, and then add a splash of fuel. And then the most important part is to move the fuel line from the upper port to the lower port, which is where the filter line goes. Now this black fuel line did not come from the factory, so it means someone did work on it. But by how it looks, it's been a few years ago. Now the purge bulb also isn't stock either, but like the fuel line, it's also a few years old. Now, when pressing the purge bulb, if it does not fill up with fuel, then the engine is very unlikely to start. Luckily, ours is filling up, so that's a really good sign that our carb is working somewhat. So it did try and start while in full choke, but it didn't do anything in half choke. I'm going to repeat the process again and see if I get a different result. Now after doing the test again, this time it started in the half choke position, but the engine still died. What that means is that the carb is not able to get enough fuel to the engine in half choke, so we need to take it off and inspect it for any problems. Now the other option as to why this engine won't stay running would be that the carb needs to be adjusted to deliver more fuel. However, since I don't know anything about the condition of this carb, it'd be a better idea to inspect it first. Now in past videos, I have done just that, adjust a carb without inspecting it. In those videos, I offered a quick fix for a running problem, and what I'm doing now is offering you a long-term fix instead of a bandage. After getting the carb off the engine, the next thing I'm going to do is run the new fuel lines. If you want to inspect the carb first before doing this, that's totally up to you. Now once the old lines are out of the tank, I can see that the holes in the tank are two different sizes. That means we'll be using two different line sizes as well. 
Now the smaller fuel line is 140 thousandths of an inch and that will be for the fuel filter while the larger line is 3 16 of an inch and that will be for the return line. Now the first line I'll be running will be the smaller filter line and to help get it into the tank I like to cut it at an angle then I'll use my bent pliers to help pull the line into the tank. After fishing the line out of the tank, I'll cut the angle piece off and then install the fuel filter. Now once the filter is back on, I'll then push it back into the tank and make sure it can reach the other side of the tank. I'll then do the same procedure for the return line except this time I'll be installing the plastic splice and then pulling the line out of the tank till the splice stops it. I used to use clear fuel line but I found that they didn't last very long and would shrink and also become very stiff over time. Now this yellow fuel line seems to last a lot longer and the rubber lines seem to last as well but they seem to get soft over time. The first thing I want to check are that these two check valve flaps are parallel with the rest of the diaphragm. Now the easiest way to do that is to look at it from the side. We want to make sure that they're not bent away from the diaphragm which ours is not. That means we can reuse this one. The next thing I want to check is whether the inlet screen is clogged with debris. Now ours is not clogged but does have some material on it. I could use some compressed air to blow it out but I'm going to remove the needle and rocker arm assembly instead so I can use some carb cleaner. This will also give us a great opportunity to inspect the metering diaphragm. Now the first thing I noticed is that the diaphragm is still somewhat flexible however any sort of stiffness will affect how the carb delivers fuel to the engine. The other problem is that the diaphragm is a bit wrinkled which will affect how it works. That means we need to replace it with a new one. Now with it gone, I can also see that the gasket is in the way of the needle and to help get the needle out, I'm going to remove the gasket from the carb. Now when finding a new replacement diaphragm, you need to make sure that the stem in the middle is the same size as the one you're replacing. The stems can either be long or short and this one happens to be the short one. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the needle and rocker arm assembly. Just be very careful because you can easily lose some of these parts, especially the spring. Now once the needle is out, I'll then spray some carb cleaner on the screen. Now this will do two things. It will clean the debris off the screen and then test if the cleaner will pass through the screen, which it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, the cleaner is not passing through it, so I'll spray it through the opposite side as well. But unfortunately, it's not passing through it either. That means we need to remove the screen and let it soak for a while in some carb cleaner. Now, if the inlet screen won't let cleaner pass through it, that means fuel won't pass through it either. Now, after letting it soak for about 10 minutes, I've reinstalled it, and I'm going to do the same test with the cleaner again. Now, this time, it seems to be finally passing through it. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to do the same test, but this time using fuel. And it looks like the fuel is finally passing through the screen, so that means we can finally put this carb back together again. I would take your time when installing the needle and rocker arm assembly because this is the most likely time for you to lose these tiny parts. Once the assembly is back on, make sure that the rocker arm moves up and down along with the top of the needle. If yours isn't working like this one, you might have to reinstall it again. Now this one is working just fine, so I'll install the gasket and the metering diaphragm. Surprisingly, I didn't have the exact diaphragm I needed, but I did have this one, and the only difference with it is that it has three mounting holes instead of four. Now, that won't really matter as much as the stem in the middle, which is the same size as the bad one. Once the metal plate is back on the carb, I can now replace the pumping section along with the purge bulb. Now, I probably should have replaced the bulb as well, but the bulb hasn't seen a lot of use, and if it does break, this one is really easy to change out. Now once the carb has been reassembled, we can finally install it back onto the engine. Just make sure that the gasket between the engine and the carb is still there, otherwise the engine may not run correctly. Now the smaller fuel line will connect to the lower brass port, while the larger return line connects to the upper brass port near the purge bulb. The next thing to do is to put some fuel into the tank and then prime the fuel system. Now when pressing the bulb, fuel should come up from the tank through the filter line into the carb and then fill the bulb. Then the fuel will leave the carb through the return line and back to the tank. As you can see, the fuel is flowing through the lines like it's supposed to. Now, if fuel does not flow through the lines, then there might be a problem with the carb. And if fuel doesn't fill the bulb up, then the engine is very unlikely to start. Now, we may need to make some carb adjustments, and if that happens, we need to use a spline to carb tool, which you can find online. Just realize that your carb might need a different tool than this one. So the fuel adjustment screws are on the front of the carb, and the screw closer to the engine is the L screw, and it's for adjusting fuel at idle or when you're squeezing the throttle to go to full speed. Now, the screw closer to the air filter is the H screw, and it's for fuel adjustment when you have the throttle lever completely squeezed. 
I'm going to do something that I've never done before, and that's to see how many turns out the screws are at right now. To do that, I'm going to turn the screws clockwise till they stop, and it looks like the L screw takes one and a half turns to bottom out. Next, I'll turn the screw back to where I found it, then I'll do the same thing to the H screw. And it looks like it takes one and three quarters turns to bottom out the H screw. I'll then turn it back out that many turns. Now the reason I'm doing this is if we ever wanted to put it back the way we found it, I know exactly how many turns to make to do that. The next thing I'm going to do might look strange, but I'm pulling out the trimmer line to the length it's supposed to be at when in use. The reason is I need to put a load on the engine, and the best way is to make sure that the line is at the correct length. After that, we're finally ready to start this engine. So it seems to be running pretty good right now, but we need to let it cool down so we can do a cold start. Now just because it runs well on these settings doesn't mean it'll work for a cold start. And if that's the case where it's hard to start with the current settings, we might have to make adjustments so that at least it'll start, but it may not run very well. If that's the case, there may be an issue with the engine that's causing this tuning problem. And that brings me to our question, which would you rather have, a machine that runs great but is hard to start, or the exact opposite, a machine that starts easily but only runs okay. Personally, I can't stand a hard starting machine, so I guess I'm choosing one that's easy to start. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.